Okay, these are the answers to the chapter four packet, sections four, five, and four, six. In section four, five, which is entitled Concentrations of Solutions, they ask you to define molarity. So if you look in your textbook on page 139, and you already know this from chemistry one, molarity is equal to the moles of solute divided by the volume of the solution in liters. So here's an example of a molarity problem. We know that we have 54.8 grams of sodium sulfate, and we are dissolving this in a total volume of 500 milliliters in a volumetric flask. So we're just gonna calculate the moles of sodium sulfate, which is Na2SO4. And if you do the calculation for molar mass, you get 142.04 grams per mole. So 54.8 grams of sodium sulfate divided by the molar mass, round that number off to three significant figures, we get 0 0.386 moles of sodium sulfate. Now in the next question, they are just referring to how they prepared the 500 milliliters of the solution. First, they added about 300 milliliters of water they made sure that all of the solid solute was dissolved completely, and then they added additional water to the flask until the water level was even with the calibration mark on the flask. The concentration of sodium sulfate would be 0 0.386 moles divided by a total volume of 0 0.5000 liters. Now I put those zeros in there just to remind you that a volumetric flask is very precise. So we have four significant figures in our volume. We're still gonna round off our answer to three significant figures because we were limited by the original number we had for mass. So now that we know the concentration of sodium sulfate, 0 0.772 moles per liter, the next question might seem a little bit strange. Didn't we just calculate the concentration? So Referring to the molar concentration of each ion, remember, this is Na2SO4. So when you are dissolving a salt in solution and it completely dissociates into ions, in this case, the concentration of sodium ions has to be twice as much as the concentration of sulfate because the formula is Na2SO4. So therefore, we know the concentration of sulfate would be the same as the concentration of the salt overall, 0 0.772, but twice that number would be the concentration of sodium ions. So in this case, 1.54 moles per liter. So now in part C and D of this particular problem, we're just using the concentration of the sodium sulfate as a conversion factor. So we know that molar mass is allowing us to convert between grams and moles. Molarity allows us to convert between moles and liters. So in this problem, we're trying to get from volume of solution to grams of sodium sulfate. If we start with 36.7 milliliters, that would be equivalent to 0 0.0367 liters. Our first conversion factor involves the concentration. So we're converting from liters to moles. And then our second conversion factor involves the molar mass, converting from moles to grams. So really in this section, we're just remembering that molarity is a conversion factor. Final answer, rounded off to three significant figures, is 4.02 grams of sodium sulfate. Now, if in part D, we're converting from moles to volume, we have 0 0.150 moles. We'll set up the same conversion factor, but this time putting moles of sodium sulfate on the bottom, and we could put one liter or 1,000 milliliters on the top. And we have 194 milliliters of that solution would be needed. In number four, we have a stock solution of 250 milliliters of one molar copper sulfate. And we need to prepare two liters of a more dilute solution. The dilute solution is one-tenth 
the concentration of the original stock solution. So on page 142 in your textbook, we have an equation that we use for doing dilution calculations. Essentially, it's m times v equals m times v. So molarity times volume equals moles. And when you do a dilution, the number of moles of solute is not changing. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that equation. The stock solution was one mole per liter. Multiply that by the volume that we need, which we are trying to find, equals the concentration of the dilute solution times two liters. If we do this math, then we need 0.2 liters of the stock solution, which is equivalent to 200 milliliters. Since we have 250 milliliters available to us, then yes, there is enough stock solution available. All right, so now on to section 4.6, which is solution stoichiometry and chemical analysis. In this particular example, we have a strong base, calcium hydroxide, reacting with a strong acid, nitric acid. Although we don't have to write the net ionic equation, we can go ahead and write the molecular equation. Calcium hydroxide reacting with nitric acid produces both water and a salt in this case, the salt would be calcium nitrate. This equation is not yet balanced. Let's go ahead and put a 2 next to the nitric acid and a 2 next to the water. So we're starting with 5 grams of solid calcium hydroxide. We can convert that from grams to moles using the periodic table. And then our next step would be to convert from moles of calcium hydroxide to moles of nitric acid. So we have the 2 to 1 ratio between those chemicals. Finally, we're going to use molarity as a conversion factor. 3 moles of nitric acid for every 1 liter or 1,000 milliliters. Since we have two significant figures in the mass of calcium hydroxide, we'll go ahead and round off our answer to two significant figures. 45 milliliters is what we get. In the last problem, we converted from grams of calcium hydroxide into volume of nitric acid. We can also go in the other direction. Let's start with volume of nitric acid. So we'll go to grams of calcium hydroxide. 25.0 milliliters of nitric acid, or 0.0250 liters. First, we'll use molarity as a conversion factor. So liters on the bottom, moles of nitric acid on top. Then we remember the balanced equation. We put moles of nitric acid on the bottom and moles of calcium hydroxide on top. And then finally back to grams using our molar mass. We'll round our answer off to two significant figures because we are limited by the concentration of nitric acid. And so we get 2.8 grams of calcium hydroxide. All right, in this next question, they ask us to define a titration experiment, and we can see this on page 145 in our textbook. Titration involves combining a solution where the solute concentration is not known with a reagent solution of known concentration called a standard solution. And then three types of reactions for which a titration can be conducted was also mentioned on that same page, and they are neutralization, precipitation or oxidation reduction. In this example of an acid-base neutralization, we have acetic acid of unknown concentration reacting with potassium hydroxide, and we know the concentration of that solution. The acetic acid is CH3COOH, potassium hydroxide, KOH, and we get water plus potassium acetate. The volume of the titrant, potassium hydroxide, can be calculated by subtracting the initial volume from the final volume. And if we do that math, we get 22.52 milliliters of the potassium hydroxide that was added. To calculate the molar concentration of acetic acid, we'll start with the volume that we know. That's 0.02252 liters. Multiply that by a conversion factor that gets us from volume to moles, that's moles of potassium hydroxide, this is a one-to-one -one ratio between moles of potassium hydroxide 
and moles of acetic acid. And then finally, this is moles, we have to get to molarity. So my final conversion factor doesn't actually have a top and a bottom. I just divide by the volume of the acetic acid and they gave us 25.0 milliliters of acetic acid in this problem, so I'm using volume in liters. If we do this math, we get the molarity of the acetic acid rounded off to three significant figures because I am limited by the sig figs and the concentration of the KOH. And I get an answer of 0 0.450 moles per liter. This answer should make sense to us because the volume of acetic acid was slightly greater than the volume of potassium hydroxide. And since they had the same number of moles, a greater volume of acetic acid must mean that the concentration of acid was slightly less than the concentration of KOH. Now another way you could have solved this problem would have been using the, looks like the dilution equation. It's actually molarity of acid times volume of acid equals molarity of base times volume of base. You are allowed to use this equation only when there is a one to one mole ratio. So we could not have used this equation in the problem that involved calcium hydroxide and nitric acid because that was actually a one to two mole ratio. But here we can do the following. Molarity of acid, which we don't know, times the volume of acid, 25.0 milliliters, equals the molarity of the base, 0.5, times the volume of the base. And we get the same answer. So just remember that in a one-to-one -one mole ratio between acid and base, you are allowed to use M times V equals M times V. Now this question is asking, suppose that we used a different concentration of KOH. If we had used a 0 0.250 moles per liter solution, that solution would have been half as much in terms of the concentration. So therefore the volume of standard solution we would have needed to reach the endpoint would have been doubled. So instead of using 22.52 milliliters of KOH, we would have had to use around 45 milliliters of the solution. Now suppose that instead of using 0.5 molar KOH, we had used 0.5 molar barium hydroxide. In this case, the barium hydroxide actually has twice as many moles of hydroxide per liter. So in this particular example, there are two moles of hydroxide ions. So since the concentration of hydroxide in barium hydroxide is twice as much as it is in KOH, we would have needed half as much of the titrant. So not 22.52, but actually around 11.26 milliliters. Number five is asking us to do a calculation, but this time we're not starting with a particular volume of an acid. We're starting with 1.25 grams of a solid monoprotic acid. And we're gonna add that to a flask, dissolve it in 100 milliliters of water, and then eventually we're gonna titrate this to the end point using 0 0.250 molar sodium hydroxide. So it's a similar titration experiment, but we're starting with solid acid instead of um, volume of a acid solution. The molecular equation for this experiment is going to involve the acid, the monoprotic acid, HX, plus sodium hydroxide. We get water and a salt. In this case, the salt is sodium X, whatever X happens to be. The volume of the titrant, sodium hydroxide, would be 29.21 minus 4.72. So we get a volume of 24.49 milliliters. How many moles of sodium hydroxide were used? Let's just multiply volume times molarity. So our volume of titrant, 0 0.02449 liters, times the concentration of the titrant, 0 0.250 moles per liter, gives us 0 0.0612 moles of sodium hydroxide. Because of the one-to-one -one mole ratio, that means that we also have 0.0612 moles of this unknown acid, this monoprotic acid. So molar mass, which is in units of grams 
per mole is going to be the mass of the acid, 1.25, divided by the moles of the acid. And again, because of that 1 to 1 mole ratio, we know that number. If we do this math, we get a molar mass of HX of 204 grams per mole. If instead of using 100 milliliters of water to dissolve this acid, what if we had used 110 milliliters? Would this have affected the volume of titrant to reach the endpoint? This is not about changing the concentration of the acid. Did we actually change the moles of the acid? No, we didn't. We got that from solid. So the volume would be the same, and that's because the volume of titrant is based on moles of acid. The volume of water that is used to dissolve this acid sample does not affect the moles, and that number, 100 milliliters, 110 milliliters, that number is not used in any of the stoichiometry calculations. So it would be the same amount of titrant needed to reach the endpoint. All right, well, that wraps up the Chapter 4 packet that covered Sections 4, 5, and 4, 6. I hope that those explanations were helpful. Thanks for watching.